practitioner, officially, I mean, it's already a minister. <laughs> Doing things a little backwards, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And um, Reverend Dr. Raymond has spoken here many times before. He speaks here once a month. And he also knows sign language, and after service, he's going to teach us some sign language. So please join me in welcoming Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. So how is everybody this morning? Awesome. So, I've got a question for you. And I've asked this before. Have you ever had one of those moments, I'm asking it a different way, have you ever had one of those moments where you ask questions of life and life doesn't give you answers? No, previously I asked you, has anybody ever had one of those days or one of those weeks or whatever when things just go <clears throat> And unanimously, we all said, yeah, pretty much, at least, at least once or twice. So now the question is, have you ever, do you ever, have moments when you ask, why? Or, what for? Or, but what does that mean? Or any number of the who, what, when, where, why, which, how questions. Any of the yes, no questions. Is this my job? Is this my mission? Is this what I'm here... Can the some, I just need a sign, something, and you don't get it, mm -hmm. or do you, mm -hmm. and we just don't know. Just a question. Now, the reason I'm putting this out there is because I've recently been in that place called the Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. Not to be mistaken with Pittsburgh, though very similar. <laughs> <laughs> so... For those who may not know, I know my Facebook friends probably know, so I was in Pittsburgh because my second oldest brother made his transition May 2nd, right? So the family stuff happens, as it always does, and I'm trying to make arrangements to figure out when I'm going to go to Pittsburgh and, you know, be the youngest son of my mother and whatnot, and drama happens. I mean, literally, his body is still warm. And the drama happens already. So my first thought is, I want to start knowing why, why, why do we always have to go through this? And then I pause for a second to say, just breathe, man, just breathe. Take this as your spiritual pilgrimage, even though this was not your intention. So I start meditating and praying. Because I know sooner or later, I'm going to have to say, Tracy, when are we leaving? And I'm going to have to go to Pittsburgh. And I need to be ready. Because I, I, anybody remember the old uh, television show with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno? Yes. What show am I talking about? The Incredible, the Incredible Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> and there's this really famous line that many of us took and would borrow and tell our supervisors or our parents or someone at that one particular moment. And that line was... <coughs> Don't make me angry. Don't make me angry. <laughs> because... You wouldn't like me when, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. There, there's a part of me where that is, you know, it's there. So I needed the prep. And this thing kept coming to my mind as I was prepping, and it's funny how things happen. That when you start to focus on or put something in consciousness, you get these, wow, that's funny, that's what I was just thinking. So, the camera. How do these things keep coming? So this one thing keeps popping up over and over, and it's been popping up since then and still is. This thing called truth. What does that even mean? You know, we talk about things like <coughs> lowercase t truth, capital T truth. Your truth may not be my truth. But is there the truth? You know? And there's this old movie that came to my mind a couple of times, 1977, George Burns, uh, Terry Warner, and I can't think of the singer's name. John Denver. John Denver, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, in the same place. And there's this line at the end of the movie where God, George Burns, is coming in and shows up to take the stand. And the court officer goes up to him and says, do you swear to tell the whole truth, the whole, the whole truth, Nothing but the truth. And he says, George Burns says, so help me me. And the judge says, so help you you. And then he goes on from there. 
But it made me start thinking about, so help me me. What is my truth in terms of how, what's in the mission and vision? How do I live my life based upon not just, yes, part of my truth, part of my facts are I was raised in an abusive household. But is that my higher truth? And is, does that have to be the truth of how I live my life? There, anybody in here fluent in at least one or two other languages or semi-fluent? Which language? Is Spanish and kind of Portuguese. Okay. French. Jewel. Which, which, oh, sorry. It's Spanish. Okay, anybody else? Dutch. Dutch. Okay. Water in Dutch. How do you say it? Basta. Agua. Agua. Lo. 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 And um, we have, I forget what language it is, but ami, and in Japanese, mizu. Which one's the truth? Are they all the truth? Is his truth about water different than her truth about water? Or are neither of them the truth, but they are truths that we use this convenient thing called language to talk about. Because ultimately, and some people say, well, but H2O is the truth. Because that's the one commonality between all of them. Yeah, but I would venture to say, if you were out in the middle of the desert, thirsty, I mean, hands are caked and licked and cracked and thirsty, and someone walks up to you with a sign that says H2O, what's it going to do for you? Nothing. So the truth is actually the experience of drinking whatever that is called. And I think there's this time when a lot of us, we don't really go head on, full into the experience of whatever that truth is. It's really easy to get lost in translation. You know, to focus more on our truth versus then versus the, the truth. We, we get mixed up with cliches about the truth. For example, a thought held in mind. Okay, fine. <laughs> Change your thinking. Change your life. <laughs> As above. So, so below. below. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So we're on the same page. Okay. Uh, I'm sure if I were to ask, can you give me some kind of statement that we know in New Thought or spirituality or something, that we know it, we can recite it, we can say it, but do we really believe it? Do we really embrace it? In the Science of Mind magazine, you know, there's the what we believe, right? And one of them says, we believe in the direct revelation of truth. What does that mean, though? And can someone tell you what that means? Nope. No one can tell you what that means for you. Because it goes on to say, we believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature. So my intuitive and spiritual nature, while being connected to being of and from the one, is not your experience of it. Because each of us, we have different fingerprints, different faces, different stuff. So how it reveals or is revealed in me and through me and as me is going to be different. So when I say I believe that, for example, I believe that my brother did not die because I, don't, I no longer believe in that thing called death the way I used to believe in it. I used to believe in it as the end. It was done. It was over. And then somewhere, I don't know what shifted, but something said, but, and I don't know if it was my thought about what energy is, or, I don't know, something shifted. So my truth now is, what Rumi said, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, it was Rumi, that what the caterpillar calls the end, the butterfly calls the beginning. So what is this thing called truth? for each of us. And how do we embody this truth to the degree that we're now living that truth? 
Because that's the ultimate goal, to live and breathe and be that truth. So that when you walk into a room, truth has no choice but to walk in as you. So that your very presence starts to morph and transform the energy of a room. But how often do we sit back and question and say, well, I'm reading the science of mind, or I'm reading Don Miguel Ruiz and the Four Agreements, or I'm reading Course in Miracles, or I'm reading whatever it is that I'm reading. But am I truly ingesting it? And I mean ingesting it to the point where I'm taking it in like food. I'm taking it in, and my body is receiving, my spirit is receiving the nourishment of what I'm taking in. Because it's one thing to read it. Sidebar note. So, we get there, Tracy and I get to Pittsburgh Thursday. Now I'm thinking, Leslie made his transition Monday. It's Wednesday. He's not going to be buried, so he doesn't need to be embalmed, so funeral should be Friday. Saturday at the latest. We get there Thursday and I find out the funeral's gonna be next Tuesday. Now normally, my saturation period in the twilight zone is three days. I got three days. I didn't bring a change of whole clothes. I got three days. I gotta be here for, oh, oh, we, oh. There's only one power in the universe. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I got, I, I had to start treating. But why? Why is that where I went? Apparently, somewhere I believe that if I do that, that truth is going to change me. Change me enough that I don't care if Rod Sterling comes in, it's not going to affect me. I don't care that what, I'm, I'm good. That it doesn't matter. So, the spiritual pilgrimage begins. Tracy and I are going through, and she can attest to, we are going through all kinds of stuff. Wave after wave. The perfect storm. And I say, you ready to go for a walk? Ten miles later, we get back to the house. <laughs> that was day one. <laughs> so, you know, things happen and whatnot, and it was always, we had this constant check-in. So what's going on with you? It's like, because I, I will black out. I will, and come to me like, oh my goodness, but did I break? So we're checking in. She said, no, you're, you're amazingly calm. So a couple days later, after a 13-mile walk, I'm in a place where I'm really good. That no matter what came at me, I was relatively okay. I found out that my family is extremely ashamed of me. Was okay. I mean, I was, a, I was annoyed because I'm thinking, I'm 50. I'm 50. And you people don't, none of you, you, I would think that the youngest child, you would read my book. I would think that you would say, oh man, my brother wrote a book, let me read it. I would think that you're my mom, you're my mom, you're going to read my book and you're going to be proud of me, not go through it in the highlight places and put it in the margins, liar, lies. <laughs> But I was okay. But how? How is it that I was okay? Because I came back here every moment. Every moment possible. They don't know. They're asleep. They don't know. I know. I know there's this, this capital T truth, and I know that love, peace, serenity, I know all of this stuff. I'm calling it into my presence right now. And not calling it into, because that's to invoke it, as if it's pulling it in from somewhere else. So I'm not invoking it. I'm evoking it. Because I know that it's already within me. So I'm calling my conscious mind to say, you already know this is in here. Bring it up. Look at it. What you put your attention on is what expands. Put your attention on love. Because if you focus on this, then when your mother comes over, you have no choice but to see her through that filter. And it works. So for me, I know that that's not the water, that's not the, the word, that's not the, it's the drinking of. It's the quenching of the thirst. I don't care what it's called. You know, it does, what, what's it, what is it? it doesn't really matter. As long as we step into the experience of it and say, what do I want in my life? 
Question number one, what do I want? Do I want peace? Do I really want peace? What does peace mean to me? Because you can't, because we throw out these words, I want peace, I want prosperity, I want health and wellness, I want joy, I want love, I want relationships, I want this, oh, I want that. And we throw it out there. But if you really ask somebody, what does that mean for you? Well, you haven't really thought about it. Because when, when, it, when it's, rather, your wish is my command. If you got, see, look, let me hit Powerball or Mega Million or let me find out that I've got a great, 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 great uncle somewhere who died and left me money. I already know the first 10 things I'm doing when I'm a millionaire. Okay. You and I, look, <laughs> boop, 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 I already know. Right. So someone says, people in New York are good for this. Hello, can you tell me? And they'll stuff a microphone in your face and ask you a question. What do you really want out of life? Mm -hmm. If you could have, be, do anything, what would it be and why? Because that why is the important thing. You can say you want peace, but if you really don't know why you want it, it's a mirage. And you will try to drink sand till, <coughs> till it's caught. Because it's not the truth. But you believe that it is. I see the water. I see it. It's right behind you. I see it. I see the palm trees. I feel the wind. It's right there. And I will run and dive and and start swimming in the sand, knowing that it's water, but it's not. And oftentimes we get, we become fanatical, even with our new thought stuff, because we get caught in this dream of what this means. We get caught in the dream of what it means to be peaceful, to the degree that, and I'm sure, and I'm not asking for names, but I'm sure if I were to ask you, do you know anyone who puts on the facade of, I'm so peaceful, Everything in my life is perfect and all is good. <laughs> and that's the air they put on. But you know, behind closed doors, they're fussing and cussing and doing all. But they put on the, I am the perfect new thought person. Mm -hmm. But why? Part of being human is taking the walk and no, knowing that occasionally you're going to trip. And when you trip, you get back up. It's okay to break down. Les Brown said, if you're going to fall down, fall on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. So identify, what do I want? And what does that mean for me? Because peace for you, and peace for her, and peace for him, could be three different versions of what peace means. My version of peace at the moment of standing in the, in the uh, funeral home when I just knew, I just knew my mother and my brother Tyrone were getting ready to go to blows. Like literally, and I'm not talking, I mean literally. And all I could do, Tracy's, Tracy went, oh, yes, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy had a moment, and all I, all I could do was, it's okay. It's, all I had to, I just, it's okay. And things calmed down. And then some of us went into the viewing room, and some stayed out. And I go in, and I sprinkle a little piece here, and I went out here and sprinkle a little piece there. And then I went to the middle and said, Ooh, okay, let's, we got this, we got this. Because apparently this is my job. This is why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and then my mother's coming in, and she's, I, I feel the heat. I, and I just gave her a look and said, Mother, this is not what we're here for. Let it go. And Tracy said to me after this, she said, you were very, that was good. I mean, I'm taking notes. You were very, she got it, and she stopped. Why? My mother's not scared of me. My mother's not scared of Godzilla. So that's not it. It was the fact that I was standing in truth. And I gave it to her in that moment and said, I'm offering this to you. You don't have to take it. But trust and believe, this is why I'm okay right now. And she took a sip. And she was okay enough to go sit down and start greeting family members as they came in. And all I did from that point forward was, as people came in, I went up, either gave a pat on the shoulder, a handshake or a hug, looked in their eyes and saw, you're okay. Because he's okay. We're all okay. Every time we have challenges, because they're going to happen, 
every time we have moments of, I just, I just want to be done. I just want to quit. I want to stop. Why does this have to be? We're going to have those moments. And it comes down to saying, what do I believe? What do I believe? Do I believe this has to be the all there is? That suffering, that pain, that this is all there is? It can't be, because I've had joy. I've had happiness. I've had love. I've had... So, if I've had it, then I have it now. And if I have it now, then I can log in now. And if I can log in now, then I have access to it now. But we have to know our password. We have to know our login account. We have to know whatever this is. And it's different for each of us. But that's what we have to look for and find. Because that's the thing that connects you to whatever you call the truth. That's what it is. And once you log in, everything starts to change. Because that's when you're really living, not existing. Enjoying life based on bliss. Not just, it's good. Because I personally believe, you know, Robin Williams is in the movie uh, Dead Poets Society. Mm. And that's probably the second or third time I had heard the concept of carpe diem. Just the thought of that movie makes me want to well up with tears. Mm -hmm. Not just because I love Robin Williams and Robin Williams made his transition. Not just because it's about a high school teacher teaching these kids amazing things that transform their lives. Not because it had moments of sadness and misery, but because the moral of the story is, even though all this happens, I mean, his character, Mr. Keating, got fired. They dismissed him for being the truth to his students. And as he's walking out with his boxes, oh, Captain, my Captain, what you taught me was not in vain. It's in me. So I don't care where you go. You gave it to me. And I'm going to now carry that wherever I go. You're already it. You already have it. It's already the truth of who and what you are in full, complete, absoluteness. But you have to know that truth for yourself and believe it. And before I end, I want to leave with a quote, also from God, a.k.a. George Burns. <laughs> so he says as he's leaving the courtroom, I know how hard it is in these times to have faith, but maybe if you could have the faith to start with, maybe the times would change. You could change them. Think about it. The divine truth is not in a building or a book or a story. The heart is the temple where the truth resides. Namaste. Namaste.